Daughters with Restoring Ghettos Forgotten. I am the authoress of Ghettos Forgotten Daughters, and I'm here today uh, because I have a lot of people asking me the question, or I'm sure you've heard other women ask this question, um, and I wanna try to attempt to answer it. But the question is, why is it that successful black women aren't being chosen? Uh, that's a question that's been out there for some time now, and I'm gonna try to attempt to address it if you um, would allow me to. Now, of course, this channel is tough topics, so it's not, I don't sugarcoat anything. Sometimes I'll have conversational topics to where you guys can just chime in and we can just talk about something easy, but a lot of my topics are really real topics that we need to address in our communities. And so I'm gonna be straightforward in anything that I say um, or do pretty much when it's pertaining to me helping my community build. And of course, the title is, my channel title is Restoring Ghettos Forgotten. I mean, a lot of people in our communities have been forgotten and a lot of us have been hurt and it's time for us to heal so we can grow. And so I'm gonna answer this question, why is it that successful black women are being chosen? Um, it's upfront and honest as I possibly can believe. And it's just my opinion, so my opinion can be wrong, but this is where I'm at. Um, the number one thing that comes out to me now, especially with our youth, our young women, is following the wrong role models. Who are you following? Are you following women of integrity? Moral standards, moral codes, are their standards high or are they way down here? <clears throat> we have to be honest about that. Because guess what? Even if we believe and we know in our heart that we're better, I'm not gonna say better than those women, but we know, whoa, I would never do that. It doesn't mean that one day you won't because you're programming your mind. Your subconscious mind is being programmed every time you allow that filth to infiltrate your inner core and it will after a, a long period of time of you watching i don't know what shows are out there now but basketball wives or housewives or something or cardi b the wap you know you're watching all this filth and it's you're taking it in and before you know it you start developing some of their traits and um i'm sorry but you know, men may not, good men, I should say, may not be attracted to women like that. They may not want to deal with women that think or behave like some of those role models. And a disclaimer, I'm at the office, so someone may chime in and tell me I have a call or something. Don't get alarmed. I'm going to just keep going with it. So that's one reason, one, uh, one idea that, that came up to me is that that may be one of the reasons why. Who are our role models? Who are we allowing to guide us or guide our youth? Uh, we have to really be careful with that. I always say, guard your gates, trash in, trash out. Sex has become too easy. It's cultural. And I know it's not just for us African-American women. All races, it's become cultural within all races. But for some reason or another, sex being easy for a black woman is always frowned upon more than any other race of women. And I'm not against any other race of women. I love all people. But I'm just saying we're always, I don't know, it's almost like we are always seen at the lowest and we're really not. So when sex becomes easy, that's not a good thing for, that's not gonna help our plight or that's not gonna help us have a good man choose us by by giving him what he wants on that first night. Our standards have to go up. If all of us stand together on this and we start making sex harder, then men would have to commit more and they would have to be on their P's and Q's and they would be held at a higher standard. And then there would be more marriages or there would be more committed relationships if we didn't allow sex to be so easy. So that's another thing. Uh, another one would be, another point I wanna make is lacking self-love and self-worth being too needy can run uh, somebody off you won't get chose if you always got to know everywhere that person is you have to know who they're dealing with where they are what they're doing at all times that's insecurity and you may even have trust issues that brings up another point too many unresolved issues if we have too many unresolved issues that's gonna 
keep people away from us that may be good for us, but because we have unresolved issues, we're pushing them away with those issues. Energy cannot be faked. I don't have, I don't care how good we look, how good we smell, how good we dress, what cars we drive, what homes we own, all the material things we could ever possess. Our energy cannot be faked. Any unresolved issues are gonna come out and that's gonna keep us from being chosen by the right man, by a good man. So we have to deal with ourselves. We have to do the work. It's not easy. But I, I think that if we put one foot forward, then God would make the rest step, make the, the rest of the steps bearable, bearable for us. So that's another point I wanted to make. Shacking up is the most major point I could make. That's a big, grave mistake that African-American women have adopted to. And I'm not saying we're the only race because other people do it. But for some reason or another, that gives our men, some of our men, an out. If, they, if we give them everything they want, need, and desire without a commitment, why do they have to commit? They don't. We have to raise our standards. We have to say, no, there will not be any shacking up. There won't be any sex on the first night. And, you know, start learning how to say no. Feel okay with being saying no. And if for any reason you say no to a man and he walks away, then he was, he was around for the wrong reasons. You've lost nothing. So, no shacking up for no reason. I don't care how much you into this person and they claim they're into you. Before you know it, you spend a night at his house and he's spending a night at your house. And then one of you decide, hey, we can save money if we live together. But you don't have a ring on your finger or a commitment, then don't do it. No shacking up. And along with shacking up, we're procreating. We're making kids in these situations. And sometimes there's no commitment attached. There's no engagement, there's no nothing. And then a baby comes and it just solidifies. It just breaks the whole relationship apart because the man didn't really want a true commitment in the first place. He was just playing, playing with you. Or he wanted you to pay half the rent. No shacking up. No, not at all because we, we're making children in this situation and it's not good for either party, especially if that person turns out not to be the person you thought they were and then you guys break up. It's just bad for the children, bad for you, bad for the other parent all the way around. So no shacking up. You keep your place, you keep his place, you take your time, you get to know that person. Um, another one that I think is gonna make people uh, cringe but it's the truth. Um, another reason could be why successful black women are being chosen is that you're waiting on a black man. Sorry, but that's the truth. Some of our black men, for whatever reason, have checked out. They're gone. Why are you waiting on them? There are other men that may be attracted to you that may be of a, a different race. For whatever reason, you wanna be loyal to the black man. Well, guess what? The black man first has to be loyal to you, and they're not. They're checking out. They're gone. So we're going to have to get that part. We have to be open to love regardless of who's there trying to give it to us. So that was a major one. I said, I can't believe I'm putting that on the page, but I want my sisters to know the truth. Stop being so loyal. They've been stopped being loyal to us. They jump ship every chance they get. The better they do, the more they're gone. So we better wise up and be open to love with whomever that wants to give it to us. Um, now, this may not be you. You may be a successful black woman and you've done your work. You've resolved your issues. You've built trust. You love yourself. You have self-worth. You tell men no. Then it may just not be your time. And you just have to be patient. But whatever you do, don't settle. Keep being who you are. Keep requiring your standards away up here. Don't settle. Now, I'm not addressing any really of the men issues because that's for another man to do. But I am addressing my sisters because I believe that we always want to be walking in the best version of ourselves. So we have to be honest with ourselves. So that's what this video is about. And like for the uh, superficial things or the aesthetic things that we may have like some women say I want he has to be six feet tall 
and God blesses you with a man that's 5'9", but you're 5'4", so he's still taller than you. Why not? Some women want a man to have a six pack, and he may have a dad bod, but he's not really out of shape. What's the big deal? Six figures, he may make five. You want him to own his own home, he may have his own condo. You know, it's like give and take there. If he has a good heart, if he can treat you well, if he's coming to you correctly, and he's telling you he wants marriage and he wants commitment, then I say, why not? Love who loves us. Why do we make things so complicated? Why do we run after people that's shown us time and time again that they're not for us? So we have to change our minds so that we can ultimately change our lives. So I'm not, like I said again, I'm not saying to settle, but you do want to keep an open mind. And just so that we understand, ladies, we can't ask for things that we don't have ourselves. We can't. <laughs> you know, he has to make six figures. We barely make $30,000 or $40,000. How hypocritical. He has to have a six pack and we ain't did an ab exercise in years, you know. Come on now. Let's get let's let's be a little realistic. So that's just my attempt to try to answer why I believe some of, of us successful black women aren't being chosen by good men. We don't want to be chosen by all the ratchetness that's out there because there's a lot of that. But why we're not being chosen by good men? Let's make sure we address some of these issues that I mentioned. And again, feel free to chime in and make a comment and you can put your own perspective on there because I'm open to it all so that we can talk about these issues and actually work through them so that we can build stronger homes and stronger communities so that we can have a legacy to leave our children and not just baby mamas, baby daddies, debt. We want to start building wealth. We want to start building homes, fathers, mothers. Sorry, I got a call. Um, but I'm going to close this off. Let me know what you think in my comments. You know, make your comments. If you haven't subscribed, please click subscribe button for my YouTube channel. And feel free to share this uh, video. And I appreciate your time. Thank you for checking into the story in Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters. Or Ghetto's Forgotten. Ghetto's Forgotten is what I'm going to change the channel to. Because I want to make sure it's open for women and men. You know, our youth boys, youth girls. Um, so I'm going to change the title, but it's here to provide hope and assistance and guidance and let us know that it doesn't matter where we come from. What matters is where we're going. So that's what this channel is about. I love you guys. Thank you for checking me out. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.